All right. Welcome back, everybody, to Hexland. Uh, in this video, we'll be talking about the redistricting principle of minority representation. This is a video series, so if you haven't watched the introduction video or the video on population equality, I do encourage you to go back and watch those videos first, as that will help uh, help you understand what's going on in this video with minority representation. So let's go ahead and jump in. So. Uh, minority representation is actually one of the principles that is protected uh, within uh, federal law. Um, it is protected and embodied in the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment, uh, the 15th Amendment, and the Voting Rights Act of 1965. These laws prohibit the denial and abridgment of the right to vote, and that includes gerrymandering designed to dilute the power, uh, the voting power of racial, ethnic, uh, or language minorities uh, within each state. Uh, so uh, now, not all types of minority representation are necessarily protected, and there are some limits to what uh, those specific laws protect, but minority representation is protected to some degree by those laws and required uh, uh, to uh, ensure fair and accurate representation. Now, there are various types of districts that can be drawn to ensure fair and accurate representation. And like I said, some of these districts are required or can be required under these laws. At other times, they're not required, but they are permitted so long as you don't engage in racial gerrymandering in the process of creating those districts. So let's start with a pretty simple example. So in this example of, of hex land, we have some green hexagons and some blue hexagons. The green hexagons are the racial majority in hex land. The blue hexagons are almost exclusively the racial minority of hex land. And we're gonna take this map and split it into six districts with each district being six hexagons. But we need to ensure that we're not diluting the voting power of the racial minority. So let me show you what that would look like to if we're going to draw a map that would actually dilute the power. So we've created districts here where the racial minority is not a majority of in any single district, despite it being a fairly, you know, a, a decent size of actual hex land or a population of hex land. It's not a majority of any district in hex land with this map. This map is actually an example of cracking. And cracking is a type of gerrymandering where, uh, for example, a racial minority group is cracked apart so they can't achieve sufficient power to elect the candidate of their choice in any district. So this would be an example where we've actually diluted their power. And this is the type of thing that you wanna avoid um, if you're trying to make fair and accurate maps. Uh, this would be a perfect example of racial gerrymandering that would be uh, unconstitutional or illegal under the Voting Rights Act. Uh, so this is what we're trying to avoid. Now here's an example that does provide some representation. Um, we've created what's called a majority minority district. So we've created one district where a majority of the voters in that district are of the racial minority. Um, so that actually provides one district where there's some representation uh, of the racial minority. Uh, how, and sometimes you do have to create a majority minority district in order to avoid a violation of the Voting Rights Act. However, in this example, we've actually packed the racial minority into a single district as much as possible. And by packing these voters into a single district, we've actually reduced their voting power. The racial majority, minority can only elect a candidate of their preference in one district, uh, that district that's entirely blue there. But it may be possible to ensure more accurate representation. Um, and so we'll show that on the next slide. But packing is another form of racial gerrymandering. And um, if uh, it depends on uh, whether or not uh, you know, what the population size is of the group and um, how uh, compact the racial group itself is. Uh, but in this example, we've packed them into a single district and actually diluted their power because you can actually draw two districts where they have a majority and they can get accurate representation in two districts. So this is an example of that. We have two districts for the blue hexagons make up a majority of both of those districts. 
we haven't packed all the minority voters into a single district. So they are able to elect candidates in two districts rather than just the one. This provides greater representation uh, among the districts for the racial minority voters. And by drawing this district, we have not diluted their power by reducing them to only one or zero uh, districts of representation. So now we're gonna get into a little bit more complicated scenario. So you may have situations where a racial minority is so small that you actually don't have uh, the ability to give them a majority of, of any district um, or, um, or you might have ra various racial minorities um, that are small, but there are they're different racial minorities. So in this map I've created, I've actually reduced the number of, my, of racial minority voters, the, the, the number of census blocks, and I've also increased the number of minority groups. So again, in this version of Hexland, the light green hexagons are the racial majority of Hexland. The blue hexagons are one racial minority, and the yellow hexagons are a second racial minority. In this version of Hexland, we also have a dark green hexagon, and that hexagon is made up of members of the racial majority who are allies to and politically adhesive with the racial minorities. So for example, if a racial minority, one of the racial minorities, uh, pre, you know, propped up a candidate from one of their communities um, and, and left, lifted up one of those candidates, uh, voters from the dark hexagon uh, would be interested in that candidate and might vote for them. So in the left district there that I've circled here in red, uh, it has, you know, it has a couple of the blue racial minority districts, some of the yellow racial minority, minority districts, and a couple of light green hexagons. But no racial minority on its own would be able to create a, a majority district. However, if those two racial minorities are politically cohesive, they can act together to support a candidate uh, they support that can defeat the candidate supported by a racial majority. This is known as a coalition district because the two racial minorities are acting in coalition to support a candidate uh, together. Uh, in this manner, the district is able to um, still provide some opportunity for representation if the racial minority groups uh, are able to work together and collaborate and support the same candidate. So even though um, each racial minority is not able to, to prop up their own candidate, they might be able to work up to, together uh, to support a candidate. Now on the other side, we've got um, on this right side of district, we've got a district that has three blue hexagons, two light green hexagons and the dark green hexagon. Now in this district, uh, you'll see that the, the racial minority is 50-50 with the racial majority. So they might be able to achieve um, supporting a candidate that um, would win, uh, but it's, it, it would, it's kind of a close shot there with, because it's split 50-50. But because this district includes the green hexagon voters who despite being a part of the racial majority uh, are allies and might support uh, you know, the candidate supported by the racial minority, they, those, uh, those green, dark green voters cross over the racial boundaries to vote for the racial minorities preferred candidate. This is called a crossover district. So here you have the three uh, racial minority district uh, hexagons and the dark green uh, racial majority hexagon that crosses over to support the racial minority uh, community's preferred candidate. And in that way, the racial minority is able to um, support a candidate uh, that would win an election in that district. So even though the racial minorities are smaller and more various, there are two different districts here that allow for um, some representation of the minority uh, groups. So let's review uh, minority representation. So several laws prohibit racial gerrymandering and the dilution of any racial, ethnic, or language minorities voting power. Um, and the shape of the district 
and who is included or excluded from each district can dilute a minority's power. So remember, you might crack apart the, the minority, you might try to pack it into a single district. Um, uh, and those are the, some, some of the things that you need to watch out for. The district shape also and composition of those districts can also ensure minorities receive fair representation. So we saw a couple of examples where we were able to ensure that the racial minority achieved uh, some fair uh, representation because it wasn't cracked apart, nor was it packed into a single district. And we also saw a, call, a couple of different uh, uh, districts that uh, helped ensure that the racial minorities had representation, including a coalition district and a crossover district. Now, minority rep and the biggest thing I wanna make sure people understand is that minority representation is not as simple as simply packing all the minority voters into a single district because that can actually dilute their power rather than uplift it. So be sure when you're thinking about minority representation, you're thinking about their, the ability of that minority to be heard and represented uh, in the district not simply trying to put them into one district um, together. Um, that actually can be racial gerrymandering in some sense, uh, in some circumstances instead. So that's a quick overview of minority representation. I hope people will join us for our next video in the series where we'll cover some different principles.